Since I did the video of how to light a fire using a flint, I've had literally some requests to do one showing you how to light fires in the wet. So with it being a wet day today, uh, I'm going to show you how you can light fires, where to look for your tinder and also how to prepare the fire ready for lighting. It's still raining, everything's wet so there's no point looking on the ground for anything to light fires with. But we've got a huge ivy plant climbing up this tree on the sheltered side. All these little air roots here are still bone dry so I'm going to cut them off and carry them with us to the camp. We've progressed a bit further, and uh, this is one of the best things for lighting fires. It's a silver birch tree, unfortunately in this wood, most of them are pretty tall, so you don't really get the flaky, nice papery bark. But I have found some here. Again, it's sheltered from the rain, which is uh, able to be pulled off. And that should rough up quite nicely and take a spark, so I'll collect some of that as well. That'll be easy. Another thing when it's raining that you can look for is mice's nests, or mouse's nests, however you see it, the nests of mice. They tend to typically nest either under logs or under flat stones. Here we've got an abandoned building which is knackered. So we're going to lift this up and have a look. Nothing under that bit, not as far as nests goes, but there is quite a few dryish leaves. Not dry enough though. Really a mouse's nest is probably the best thing because they, they, they always nest in places that are really dry. Find the nest, take it, put it in your pocket, and that's something else to light the fire with. Under areas of dense foliage, there might be dead branches like this that are still attached to the tree that have escaped the rain snap those up stick them in your pocket they'll do for when you get the fire initially started they'll help it to get a bit more heat in and ready you for your, your bigger timber um, snapped some branches off a tree which was in a particularly sheltered part um, the wood on the outside is wet, but when we split it, it'll be dry inside. Yeah, that's bone dry. So as soon as we get the fire going with our tinder, we can put these on, and that should generate quite a lot of heat and allow us to put bigger sticks on, which might not be perfectly dry. Because these are quite big lumps, instead of splitting them all the way down, I'm just going to cut into them to make loads of little surfaces for the fire to catch. You see how dry and flaky the inside of here is. The slightest little flame on there will catch that a hold and it should take to the rest of this branch. Luckily it stopped raining and the sun's come out. If it hadn't have stopped raining, you would just look for a place that was particularly dry or even stick your head down a badger hole, a foxhole or something. Light your fire down there, bring it out in the open. So now we've got a pocket full of dry birch bark. 
So we're going to prepare the fire for lighting. Because the only birch bark we get is pretty heavy, we're just going to score it up a little bit to get it all feathery and fine and get a lot of dust in there. Once you drop a spark on that, it'll catch much better than trying to drop a spark luckily onto the ends of here and expecting it to, to go up there. tearing this up as fine as it'll go as well so we've got really fine whispery papery bits of bark and then hopefully as soon as there's a the slightest flame it'll catch these little wispy bits and travel up into the heavier more tarry bits of bark and generate a bit of heat right we've got a, a little bed of birch bark laid down there all ripped up into tiny little strips over the top of that we're going to drop a little bit of the, the air roots, the first, very first things that we picked up from the ivy climbing up the tree, make a little nest in there. So hopefully when we drop a spark in there, it's going to either catch the dry ivy roots or the birch bark. Whichever one it catches, the flames should take and it should provide us with a bit of a fire. Now that we've got the tinder prepared, ready just to drop a spark in, using a flint and striker, um, we're almost ready to go. We've got the tinder ready. We've got the very dry sticks that we collected on our walk, little ones. And then we've got the ones that we've prepared by roughing up, the more substantial, very, very dry sticks. And then we've got the not so dry sticks. So we're going to drop a spark in here. As soon as this catches, chuck some of these on. As soon as they get going, move on to here. And then finally, move on to here. Once these are going, we'll be able to put bigger sticks on. And just to prove that it's lighting the fire in this manner, when it's raining, or when it has been raining, is child's play. Freya's going to light the fire, not me. Right, Freya's just about to light the fire, hopefully, with the flint. As soon as it gets lit and it starts to go, James is going to start putting the smaller sticks on, and then we'll move on to the bigger fire sticks. Go. Well then, just go gentle with it, Freya. That's it. Hold it, hold, hold the flint straight up and down. Yeah. Straight up and down. That's it. You have to light it soon, otherwise the bears will come and they'll eat us. Not really. Unfortunately, in our survival situation, Freya has died from hypothermia, froze to death, so James is going to try. That's it, yeah. That hurts. I know. Come on, because it's starting to rain. We're going to have to light it, otherwise we're going to get washed out here. Hold well on, James. Watch, watch. Go. Just keep a hold of, yeah, keep a hold of that in your left hand, and like that on an angle like that. Okay, so it's cutting right on the edge, so it's scraping all the stuff off. Yeah, do you want me to do it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, James has also died as well, so it's left up to Daddy. <laughs> See if Daddy dies, or does he not? Really all we need to do is just get one decent shower of sparks in there and it should take. 
quickly it's starting to rain. Once the birch bark gets going, it gets a lot of heat in it because there's a lot of tar in the bark. Right then, James, put the smaller ones on, very gently on the top. Now all we do is try and build it up in a sort of pyramid shape with the smaller sticks. That'll allow air to come in and hopefully deliver quite a lot of heat. But it started raining again now, quite heavily, so it's just as well we've got it lit when we did. Uh, what these big, flat, dry sticks do is they protect it from the rain and they also contain the heat, a little bit like an oven. So within this pyramid, very, very hot. So whatever's inside there is burning at a high heat, which means that as soon as these ones get a good hold, we can start and put sticks on that aren't quite dry i.e. that are quite wet and there'll be enough heat going to hopefully burn them. You can see the amount of flames coming off that very small fire because we've got it built up as a pyramid it's drawn air in from down here as the flames produce the heat the air rises draws more air in it really shoots it out the top very hot indeed. This is the most important part of any survival situation Roasting the marshmallows? Of course. <laughs> or burning the marshmallows, as seems to be happening. If we just rolled up to this particular site and then decided to light a fire straight away, we would have had a hell of a job trying to light it because there's no silver birch trees in this particular part of the wood. There's no ivy up any of the trees and it's all larch conifers which don't really give the ground a very good protection from the rain. So everything on the ground is totally wet. We would have been struggling. But luckily, as soon as we walked through the deciduous wood and we passed a lot of silver birch trees and also a lot of trees with ivy on, we've got good tinder. And that's the key to making a successful fire in the wet. I did say go. Is it still going? Yeah. And again. And again. <laughs> 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 oh, well, it's hit a knot. We'll try this one. <laughs> can I stop it now? You can. <laughs>